Hello and welcome to the video guide walkthrough for the Huntmaster, the fifth and penultimate boss in the Dachshund Nature of Progress operation. Huntmaster is a bit of a tricky boss in that the group alternates between doing single target damage with a variety of mechanics uh, to having to deal with very challenging um, ad rushes. Um, even in story mode this, this boss can be tricky and it also has a very strict positional awareness check that can wipe the group if everybody isn't paying attention to it. So we're going to walk through the mechanics, talk about the layout, talk about strategy, and hopefully give you everything that you need in terms of knowledge and tips and approach to be able to get this boss down cleanly every time. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so let's start with a few layouts to hopefully make things appear a little, a little less chaotic for everyone. So when we first begin the fight, um, Huntmaster is going to teleport into the middle, and the center area is going to be covered with this massive spotlight. It's important that everyone stay in the spotlight at all times, with one key exception. Um, staying in the light protects you from the ads that are going to gradually spawn throughout this phase, until near the end there will be over a dozen. Um, and any time anybody leaves the circle, the ads will quite literally dogpile that person and can easily kill them if they're not very, very quick to get out and get back in. And the only time they should do that is for the Firestorm Grenade mechanic, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Otherwise, you need to stay in the circle. Sometimes as the circle shrinks, it will also move around. And at its smallest point, it will only be around, I don't know, six, seven, eight meters. It'll be quite small, as you'll you'll see in more detail here in a moment. And you have to stay in it. Even as it shifts, sometimes it will move away from the boss, in which case you need to stay in the circle. And then at, after the circle moves away from the boss, he'll teleport in. But again, you got to stay in the side of the circle, um, except for the Firestorm Grenade mechanic, which uh, you'll see live here in a moment. Effectively, he's going to be a big yellow circle is going to go under someone's feet. They're the one targeted with the Firestorm Grenade, and they have around three or four seconds uh, to move and reposition before they get hit with the Firestorm Grenade, which will put an AoE on the ground that does, deals a little bit of damage to whoever gets hit with it, but more dangerously, it leaves a persistent AoE on the ground for a period of time that will deal a fair bit of damage to anyone that stands in it. And so it's important that whenever someone gets targeted by the Firestorm Grenade, they get out of the group. So let's uh, take a look at what this looks like in real time. Okay, so here we're about to pull. Uh, the boss can bug a little bit, so sometimes it can be a good idea to actually target him, but rotate your camera away uh, so you're not looking at him, so that when he teleports, your game doesn't graphically bug where it says he's in one place, but he's not. I've um, found that to be somewhat helpful uh, when that happens. So, so there's a variety of other mechanics that happen during this phase. For the most part, you can ignore most of them. But here's the Firestorm Grenade. So a player's moving away. Um, probably not quite a, There you go. So they're, they left one in the group. Um, not a big deal. Important that you know where it is. It's also worth noting that sometimes it bugs. So here in this example, we didn't even, we didn't even see the persistent AoE, which is more dangerous. So if you, that happens, it's a good idea to have someone put a target marker on the ground uh, using a tactical marker so that they know. You see the white circles getting smaller and smaller. It's going to get really, really small, and it's going to move around. Here, it's we're actually kind of lucky in this pull. It's not really shifting too much. So now someone's got the Firestorm Grenade, so now they get out of the group. Now they're going to get dogpiled. Now they're going to come back in. A helpful tip, if you are the, the off-tank and you don't have aggro, if you uh, a good approach is actually to have you step out of the group before the person with the grenade. That way the dogs leap to you. And you can handle that much more easily than a DPS or healer. That way when they step out, they not don't get jumped by as many. So here you can see the circle's getting really, really small. The boss isn't even in the circle. So you got to watch your step. Okay, so let's have another look at, the, at that mechanic in this first phase again. So again, we leap to the boss. Here, I'm at, here he teleports to the middle, damaging the boss. There's a variety of mechanics, as I said. Power Shot Volley is an attack that may knock you back. It's not a big deal in story mode. He has a Conal attack, which is also not a big deal. But here's the Firestorm Grenade. That's really all we care about is the White Circle and the Firestorm Grenade. So here you can actually see the AoE graphic the way it's intended to be. So you can see that's about the size of it. Um, it, it is about, it's actually a little bigger than the White Circle is going to be at its smallest point. Um, so it's very important to get that out of the group. 
Um, watch your use of, of movement abilities because you don't want to get so far out that you can't get back in. Um, if you don't have a lot of movement abilities, um, I suggest um, trying to um, run out and then leap back in. So here you can see this orange debuff on some of us, where in this pull, the circle moved us towards the fire, so we had to stand in it. Luckily, it actually dissipated after a while, so we were standing in it, and then thankfully it, it went away. And so there, somebody went way out and dropped it a long ways away using a roll, which is really great. There's no way we ever, ever kind of have to go there. So now we're just staying in the circle, staying in the circle, until we see this, um, this primal fear cast and the fortress mechanic. That's going to trigger us to the next phase. So now let's let's talk about fa uh, the transition phase. Okay, so you may have noticed that um, based on the focus target cast bar, um, Huntmaster will cast an ability called Primal Fear once in kind of the middle of the white spotlight phase, and then he'll cast it again right before the end of the phase. Now, what's important about Primal Fear is that, that that puts a debuff on all the adds that causes them to do less damage. So that is the safest time to step out. And so what I usually recommend is when you see that Primal Fear cast going out as uh, the second time, uh, which is when the white circle is really, really small, at that time, the, the off tank, or whichever tank has the, the best defensives or most defensives or best, best uh, mitigation for AoEs or whatever, uh, should step out of the group first. That way, all the adds will leap to them. Um, since they have the Primal Fear debuff, they will initially do less damage, but that groups them up, and it helps keep them away from everybody else. If that player is far enough away, they should preferably use an AoE taunt um, after all those leap in after a couple seconds to help hold aggro. And then um, shortly after the Primal Fear cast, the group should be looking for a Fortress cast, which I'll show you this again in a second. Uh, once the fortress cast goes off, the Huntmaster shields himself and stops taking any damage. And then immediately after that, he's going to going to use a concussive shockwave attack, which is going to knock everyone back and deal damage. So the timing for this is a little tricky, but it should basically work as follows. Primal Fear cast goes out, the tank steps out of the group to get all the adds to leap to them. They should step, um, at least on the map graphic you see here, they should step east. So they should step... Um, kind of away from where the group originally leapt in. Um, the positioning for that's very deliberate. And so they step out at, as Primal Fear goes out. Um, then the rest of the group should stay in for a few seconds. And as soon as they see the Fortress Shield cast, everybody else needs to get out of the group and move towards the tank that has the adds. At this point, all DPS should start AoE uh, DPSing all those adds and burn them down as quickly as you can. Um, anybody that has AOE stuns, in particular, particularly hard stuns, should try to cycle through those because that will help the damage. Um, and, the, and the goal here is to make sure that the adds get grouped up for efficient AOE DPS. That also helps facilitate the group being grouped up for easier group healing. And by moving people out and away from the Huntmaster before the Shockwave, uh, you don't lose uptime because you get knocked back and kind of stunned for a, a second or so um, That when you could be damaging something or healing somebody. Um, and uh, you avoid taking the damage. It's easy to lose several people during this phase. So you do that. You're AoEing down the ads. They're all grouped up, hopefully. And you're doing what you do. During this time, a charger is going to spawn from either the west or the north door. It'll only be one, but it'll be at one of those two positions. And it will have like a yellow graphic line of arrows pointing at the Huntmaster. And so the Charger is going to charge the Huntmaster. It's going to deal some damage, break its shield. It'll also deal a ton of damage to the Charger. And the Charger is going to be stunned. Now, as soon as that happens, the group, all the DPS, everybody that's, that can deal damage other than the healers, all need to swap to the Charger and burn it down because it'll be stunned for about eight seconds. And then it casts a buff and kind of gets up and gets ready, and so after about 10, 11 seconds, after it hits the Huntmaster, the Charger is going to start attacking people, and it's pretty much going to start one-shotting people. Um, so that's really the DPS check to the fight. Um, so everyone needs to be ready, and getting the adds grouped up is important. Um, the tank that has aggro can can hold them um, as best they can, but ideally would go help with the Charger. Uh, it's really, really important. The DPS is really crisp here. Okay, so let's let's see this in real time. 
Okay, so let's pick up in the middle of a, of a phase one. And so here we are, the light's getting smaller. We're going to see our first Primal Fear cast here momentarily. Um, one alternative strategy, if your group's just really having issues um, with the ads just killing people, is you can spend a little bit of time getting some extra damage. So Primal Fear goes out. At this point, if you want to, you could actually have a tank step out of the group to group them up, kind of near the circle. And then you could throw in a bunch of AoE DPS. Um, another approach you could use is you could drop the fire grenade and try to use a tank to kite adds into the fire grenade. The fire grenade actually will deal damage to them and can eventually kill them. There are some risks to that approach because of the, how the boss's enrage mechanic works, which we'll, we'll talk about. But here we go. So here's the second primal fear. You see I'm the tank. I'm stepping out and I'm stepping out of the group to help group all the adds up. I'm not actually positioned maybe in an ideal field spot, uh, but I'm stand here. We've got the adds grouped up. Now we're just AOEing down. There's the charger coming in. It's important everyone's out of the way of the charger so you don't get clipped by the knockback. But we're still DPSing adds, DPSing adds, DPSing adds. And right now, everybody swaps to the charger. we got to kill that charger before he gets active or we're going to start losing people. And so the adds are still up. That's okay. You just kind of have to hold on at this point. I'm kiting the ad. Um, if you have a tank, you, that can buy you a little bit of time. Now it's important here that everyone steps back. Notice where I'm positioned. I'm towards the I'm, as, I'm law, far away from the water. That's going to be important for the next part of this second phase, which is the holdout cover phase. You see this big red circle that just appeared. That's a 30 meter circle around the huntmaster. Anybody that gets within that circle will be one shot. So it's important that everyone stay back. Where I'm positioned here is a pretty decent spot and you just stay out of it. If you have a greater than 35 meter range, or greater than 30 meter range, then you can set up just outside of it. So some gunslingers, um, telekinetic sage or lightning sorks can set up just outside of it and continue damaging the Huntmaster. Um, the Huntmaster generally will target adds that are in that circle. He'll slowly one-shot them all. Um, if he, all the adds are dead, he'll swap to hitting you, you guys for some damage. He'll do that for a while, the spotlight will come back on, and then we basically just repeat this cycle of mechanics. So here's a more of a visual graphic representation of the second part of that phase, which is all the ads are gonna gonna target the Huntmaster. As soon as that red circle goes up, called Holdout Cover, he is gonna get aggro on all of the ads. They're all gonna come to him, and again, everybody has to stay out of that red circle. Um, if there are adds up, generally the group will not be taking damage. So if you're careful, this is an ideal time. Um, you should be able to get at least one and maybe two battle reses. And if you have players that can stealth, you may be able to get one or perhaps multiple stealth reses. So even if you lose several people during that really messy ad phase, it's still possible to get most of the group, maybe all of the group back up uh, before you start the next cycle. Uh, it is possible if your group's running behind on damage and you're not sure you'll you'll beat the damage check, which we still haven't talked about and will in a moment, then uh, tanks or players with taunts can taunt the adds while they're outside the circle. That will cause them to swap to you for a brief time. You can also use stuns and roots and uh, all slows and things of that nature to keep adds outside the circle and damage them. That... Um, helps minimize the number of stacks the boss drops before you get into the, the next uh, cycle. So at that point, you just literally are going to rinse and repeat these mechanics until you get the boss to 35%. And then we get to kind of the very, very last phase. Okay, we've talked all about mechanics, and now let's talk about the DPS check. So you'll notice at the top, the Huntmaster on my focus target bar has 50 stacks of buff called Master of the Hunt. Um, every time he kills anybody, he drops a stack. That means anytime he kills an ad, or anytime he kills a player, he drops a stack. If he loses all of his stacks, then he enrages. So the overall goal of the fight is to get him to 35% before he gets to zero stacks. As a practical matter, in story mode, this usually means you can go maybe three full cycles where you go through the spotlight phase, 
then the dealing with adds and the charger, and then the holdout cover, red circle of death phase. You can go through that maybe three times before he enrages, which is a relatively generous a DPS check, um, but but it, but but is a check, unlike say the Trandoshans where you can kind of take as long as you want. So you'll notice here he's still at 50 stacks. It's important to note the fire grenade counts. So if any adds get clipped by the fire grenade, um, and dive as a result of it, then he will drop a stack. Uh, the overall goal here is really to avoid any adds dying from the fire grenade if possible. So there you can see he dropped a stack, and you can see there's a, an ad over there by the back DPS marker. So one of the adds died from the fire grenade, so he dropped a stack, and it looks like a second one. Um, also from that same fire grenade, it would appear. So he's at 48, and so now we're getting ready to deal with all the adds and all this stuff, and then we deal with the charger just just like we've discussed and during the holdout cover phase he's going to be killing ads killing ads killing ads so he's pretty much always going to drop 15 16 to 20 some odd stacks um, so usually almost at any group should be able to make it through at least two cycles making it through a third cycle can be a little bit tricky uh, depending upon you know how many of those ads you can kill because in this in this example we, there's we've killed a decent number of ads going into the holdout cover phase there's still a few up and more will continue to spawn so if you can get rid of most of those ads um, prior to killing the charger uh, then you probably can can go through a third cycle um, if you're not able to kill really any of them then uh, you may not be able to get to three the good news is that's not a super difficult check and it's also, you may note, these adds as they run in to attack him are also dealing damage. So depending on the number of adds that are up, he may lose a couple of percentage points of health uh, just from their attacks as well. So it's not a super difficult check. You don't generally need to worry about it. If, if you're keeping your group alive and everyone's up and you're executing mechanics, it's a, it's a fairly easy DPS check. Okay, so now let's talk about the end. Right, and we're going to see one more cycle of these this ad wave, just because I, I think this is this really this part is the trickiest part. Um, but we're going to transition into the end here shortly. So we get our second fire grenade. The tank steps out in this case me to try to get some of the ads on me. I was actually a little late there, and uh, we're about to push the boss um, into the. He's about to do his. So there's his primal fear. So now all the ads um, are going to do a little bit less damage. Um, so I'm trying to gra gather them up as best I can. I've got kind of the most of them. There's Fortress, so the group needs to get out. If the, anyone that doesn't get out gets knocked back, so take some damage. So now we've just got all these ads. Um, again, we're DPSing the ads. We see the the uh, telegraph there from the charger running in, and as soon as uh, that happens, now everybody needs to be on the charger and DPS him as quickly as possible. And you'll notice he's at uh, a lo the low in the low 40s. And so we're actually going to transition to the holdout cover phase. Um, but the ads are actually going to push him, which can happen. Um, so we lost one or two people there from the ads, which is a little little messy, but that's honestly fairly common. And it's just, just a little, little chaotic. So here the ads are going to leap into him. Now he's in the high 30s, and they're actually going to push him to 35. The thing you need to be aware of, if ads are up and you're not in the middle of a spotlight phase like this, the Huntmaster will briefly drop aggro when he gets to 35. So he's about to hit 35. He's going to start regenerating health rather quickly. All the adds are going to run back in towards us for a short time. And then once he finishes his ultimate hunter, that's his, his enrage cast, then all the adds are going to go away. But for a brief time, we're getting like dogpiled. So we throw out a taunt, throw out a stun, whatever, and boom, they're gone. Now here comes Shelly. Shelly actually is going to eat the Huntmaster. Spoiler alert. And now you just have to deal with Shelly. There's only a couple mechanics to worry about. One is um, Shelly puts a stacking um, acid dot that ticks. Well, I guess it doesn't stack in hard mode, but an acid dot that ticks every few seconds and does group damage. Um, Shelly's health depends a great deal on um, if there are any adds were pushed into the water, which is another strat primarily for hard mode. Um, she has more health. So generally she should have very low in story mode. The main thing though is the nom mechanic which is that you see the pulverized cast will root whoever she targets. And then she targets them with a purple circle that you may have just seen, and I'll show you again in a second. And the idea is that she roots them in place and then puts a purple circle on them. And then anything in that purple circle gets eaten and cannot be rezzed. So you have to swap taunts to 
move her around so that the person that gets stunned or rooted never gets eaten. So here's a, a graphical representation. Shelly spawns near the water. And what happens is there's a pulverized cast that roots you in place. And then she does her nom mechanic, which is actually a thing, that puts the purple circle under you. So the idea being that you get rooted and then a few, then a couple seconds later, the purple circle goes out. So what needs to happen is as soon as you get rooted, which should be the pulverized cast, um, the other tank should taunt. That way, you're the one that gets rooted, but they're the one that gets the purple circle. But since they're not rooted, they can just step out of it. And so it's really, really important that the tanks are communicating. And I also strongly suggest that both tanks stay on the move all of the time. That way, you can't help but notice if you're running, 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 and then all of a sudden you're rooted in place, you instantly know what's going on. Um, if everyone's doing that consistently, that also can be helpful for the other tank, because basically if the boss stops moving, they probably need to taunt. Um, it's a good idea if you have any DWTs, if you have any players that have DPS players that have a taunt, to make sure they're aware of it, because Shelly doesn't really do that much direct damage. It's really the nom mechanic, and then just the ticking AOE damage. That's that's the that's the challenge in this phase. So even them, it, it's if you have any doubt about whether you should taunt, you should taunt, because um, that. It's better to over taunt than under taunt in this particular case, because again, the Shelly's direct damage isn't isn't really a, a big deal. So it can be a little bit difficult to see the circle because the acid, the graphic associated with that acid cloud is also purple, but this is what it looks like. And, and again, if you don't cross taunt, then what will happen is the tank or player with aggro that gets rooted will then have a purple circle under their feet. And then whoever, anybody that's in that circle, whether that player or if someone else steps into it, you get nommed, which not only is a one-shot mechanic, but also makes you, uh, it's impossible to res you. So once you get killed by that, you're, you're done for that pull. So again, make sure you keep, keep Shelly on the move um, and be ready to swap taunts, whether with another tank or a DWT or whatever. As long as you keep her on the move and manage the, the swap, appropriately, then, the, then this phase is really, really easy in story mode. Um, but if you're not familiar with that, it can be, it can be really frustrating when people are just getting one shot over and over and over again. Uh, but, but anyway, that's why. Easy to deal with once you know. Okay, one more time through this last phase just for good measure now that we talked about the mechanics. So here we are pushing the boss. We just pushed the boss and now he's healing. He's going to his holdout cover phase. We've still got the spotlight, so if we stay in that, we don't have to worry about the ads coming at us like in the previous example. Um, but anyway, either way, there you see the purple circle. If you look carefully, you saw that's Shelly did to the Huntmaster what she'll do to your tanks if you don't watch out. So again, there's the acid puddles. You may see that little debuff at the tank on the top right that looked kind of almost like a funny looking sandwich. So they got eaten. And so now we're going to keep moving, keep moving. Um, people are taking ticking AoE damage. I'm gonna, the, this is from a healer point of view. So you can see that. So there's the debuff that was on our tank. Um, and they got gobbled up. So that's the part you have to be careful about. Okay, one more time. So here comes Shelly. This is the same the original POV we saw. So I, I, this is in the POV of a tank. So again, we grab the boss, keep the boss moving. Um, and I'm rooted, so then we, we, we swap taunts. So there's the purple circle, but he's able to move out of it. And I'm waiting for him to keep moving. And uh, we're just watching for that. And so now we're keeping him on the move. Now he gets rooted, so now I'm gonna grab the boss. And now the purple circle spawned under my feet there, but I moved out of it. And I'm just, you can either run her in a circle. Here I am kind of staying on the move, or you can just kind of jog from side to side if you have a lot of melee DPS. What I usually try to do is run a circle around that big grassy knoll. That way the melee DPS don't have to move too much. Um, but as long as you're watching out for that and your tanks are communicating, it's relatively easy once you know what to look for. So again, um, hope this is a fun, helpful video. It's a really fun fight. After this, you go straight to Apex, which is a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks for watching. Good luck.